Well, hello, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. And today I want to talk about a model that I've created of a geodesic dome or a geodesic sphere. And my question is, what good is having some of the most powerful software uh, programs in the world if you don't take on a challenge every now and then? So I took on a challenge. Uh, one of the viewers said that they were having trouble doing a ge geodesic dome. And so I had never done a geodesic dome. And I figured, well, that's a nice challenge. So the very first thing I started to do, I tried to do, was to make a sphere and uh, start breaking it up into triangles. So this is a sphere with 200, with a uh, diameter of 200. And uh, what I did was uh, I went to the datum plane function and I made a datum plane that is tangent to the sphere. And then I made a datum plane that was offset from there. And I made a variable that I could use to change the offset. So as you can see, I got this variable A. And then I figured that if I kept varying uh, the uh, distance of A, there would be a point where the length of this line and the length of that line became equal. And then I would know that I'd have, that I had equal, at, equal length, uh, uh, equal, yeah, equilateral triangles, equal length, line, uh, equal length sides is equilateral triangles. And so I kept moving this plane out and out and out. I tried all these different numbers and it wasn't converging. I wasn't getting this to be equal. As a matter of fact, I put a um, length expression on this leg and a length expression on this leg. And as you can see, it's P48 and P36. And I subtracted them and I made a variable called B. And then I went to optimize that. I used the optimize, optimization code in NX, which is really powerful and, and it works really well. And I put in a range and tried to get it to converge to zero. That's B, uh, the, the uh, distance between the subtract or the numerical value of the subtraction of the length of this and the length of this, and it didn't converge. And that's how I knew that I would have to pick a different number of triangles in a inscribed circle. So that was my first attempt and it failed. And so then I went to my second attempt and I succeeded. So the second attempt was assuming that I would do an offset plane and I would do an inscribed uh, circle of five triangles. And I found out that there was a way to optimize the distance between those two planes um, in order to get the length of the sides to be exactly equal. So I am going to do a control shift home, which turns the model back in time so that you can see the different entities that I used to create this geodesic dome and the different techniques that I used. And now I'm doing control shift right arrow. And of course, there is my sphere of 200 millimeters. Then I did a line segment and I did an intersection between that line and sphere. And then I did a datum plane that is um, that was at the top of that uh, point and tangent to the sphere. And then I did a datum plane um, offset from that. And then I did an, a, a, an inscribed, let me, um, let's do uh, control shift K. Control shift K. There we go. Let's bring this back. And let's go to the wireframe display so that you can see what happened with this sketch. So with this sketch right here, what I did was I intersected the circle with a datum plane to make this inscribed circle. And then I inscribed a triangle within it. And then I made this line segment right here. Uh, that is the uh, bisector of two of the uh, uh, angled lines. And I put a distance constraint on there, or I'm sorry, a, dif a distance dimension, such that the next thing I could do is another triangle 
that was adjacent to this one, but I'd control it with that length. So here we go. I'm going to do a control shift arrow, control shift arrow. Oh, now that I've done that. Oh, I've got to get out of the sketch. That. Okay. Control shift arrow, 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 arrow. Okay. So, so now um, the way I proceeded was to create this line segment. And this line segment is equal to that line segment. And that line segment intersects the spherical diameter. I'll show you. If I bring this sketch back online, edit it, come on, edit. There we go. So this uh, line segment uh, is set to the same length as this one, and this length is derived from the distance, uh, the distance uh, or I'm sorry, the measurement expression from this line. So it intersects the spherical diameter. Um, in order to do that, you have to go into this sketch and you have to make an intersection curve with the surface and then put a point, um, a point on curve entity here. So that's how you get this line. And then once you get that line, you can then put a datum plane between uh, that uh, that curve and that curve. So there's the datum plane. Then on that datum plane, you sketch another triangle. And then once you have that triangle, um, or once I had that triangle, I patterned that triangle. And so now I have three triangles that I know are the um, entities that I need. And then I started doing trims. So as I made the triangles in that way, I would trim the sphere and I started getting uh, what they call an icosahedron, an icosahedron. So it turns out that if you start with um, a triangle and you, and you use this method to, to um, get to this shape, you create a icosahedron, which is a shape with 20 figures, 20 sides, 20 sides of equilateral triangles. And so each time I uh, went through this process of taking that line segment and um, making new triangles, I would put a datum plane on the triangle and then I would do a trim. Uh, now, I should back up a step and say the way I figured out the exact length that the triangle should be was by starting with that same uh, technique that I used on the first one, namely selecting a um, datum plane offset from a tangent datum plane, cutting, uh, intersecting that uh, sphere with a datum plane, um, doing an inscribed um, triangle and then um, using the uh, distance command to figure out how to make those triangles come together perfectly so that there was no space in between them. Um, so that was um, a process of using the optimization code. So you do menu analysis and uh, right here is optimization and here was the optimization that I did. I called it the SS optimization. And as you can see, it converged. And the distance that I got from a, for a tangent plane from a spherical, um, uh, a tangent plane off of a, I'm sorry, an offset plane from a tangent to the top of the sphere was 20.5346. Of course, this number um, is actually bigger than this. It goes on and on and on. Um, so uh, that was a revelation. That really gave me the result that I needed. As a matter of fact, if I go to the expressions editor, you can see that the real number is 20.5345538. That is probably accurate enough. 
And so if you take the ratio between um, 200 and 20.534, 555, 3848, you could probably do any sphere of any diameter with those two numbers. So that's a special number right there. 20.534-555-3848. Dial 1-800. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, um, a lot of these, a lot of my um, trims, um, I started to color code them so that I could, make uh, current feature, so that I could count them more easily. So there, so there is an icosahedron, that's a 20-sided figure, icosahedron. And then I knew in order to get a geodesic dome that looked better, I would have to break each one of these triangular faces into four faces. And the way you do that is you break each triangle into one, two, three, four little triangles and you take the points um, in, this, in the midpoints of each triangle and you project them up to a spherical surface. So in order to proceed, I had to have a good set of points. So I'm just going to show you how I did that. Okay, so I started making points on every vertice. And let's see if I can get this to go now. No. Okay, so I'm going to have to show you these. There we go. Uh, let's do make current feature here. So I started making all these points. And let's do a Control Shift K. No, let's do a Control W on points. Control W so you can see the points. Oh, I just, <laughs> I just hid them. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, uh, what I ended up doing was making points on every corner Let's bring them all back. There we go. On every corner and every midpoint of every intersection of this uh, ice icosahedron, icosahedron. Um, great. So um, I can't tell you that this was not tedious, <laughs> but I really wanted to see it happen. Okay, next, once I had all the points, I projected them up to a sphere. So I had this sphere here. This was a new sphere because the other one had been, um, I had trimmed it all to the icosahedron. And then I did a project curve and I projected all the points up to that spherical surface. And NX is really good because when you project, you have a choice of projecting along a vector or projecting along face normals. And if I couldn't project along face normals, I would have to have laboriously um, created every single vector and projected it like that. And, uh, you know, that would have taken a lot of time. So uh, now I'll show you what happens. The current feature when you project all those points onto a spherical surface. So that's what that looks like. All those points are evenly spaced. Um, that's wonderful. So as you can imagine, once I had all the points, I had a way of now starting to create um, all of the uh, connections between the points. Um, so as you can see from um, from entity 160 all the way to entity 280. That's 280 minus 160 is 120 line segments. And it looks like what I'll show you in a moment. Let's take this to that and show. So there, now that's really starting to look like a geodesic dome. I've got a few extra points there. Okay, once I had all the lines, then as you can imagine, I started making surfaces 
and the surfaces were done with the n-sided surface. Make current feature, make current feature, make current feature. So I, one by one by one, made a bunch of surfaces. There's 80 surfaces in all, just like that. Make current feature. And there's all the surfaces. Okay, this is definitely not a model that you just make really quickly. <laughs> At least I can't. Um, there may be a way of patterning this in some way. I'll, I'll have to look for that. Uh, maybe with the algorithmic modeling, I could really do this much, much, much faster. I'm going to have to really um, do some investigation. Then, of course, finally, I sewed it all together. And there you have it. I can say Control w now. I can get rid of the points. I can get rid of the curves, the sketches, so on and so forth. And there you have a solid body that is a 80-sided um, geodesic dome inscribed in a 200, uh, 200 um, unit diameter sphere. So there you have it. I think it's pretty much perfect and uh, the key to that was optimizing the distance between those two planes and ensuring that these triangles were um, equilateral. What fun is that? Um, NX is an amazingly powerful tool. It was easy for me to do because I did have that optimization code and um, without any other knowledge of the math that goes behind or goes to create a geodesic dome, you know, I'm sure somebody could tell me um, how to get to that perfect number um, with calculus or whatever. I was able to use the optimization and just keep, and NX keep, kept trying different numbers until it got that perfect ratio. So that's kind of was the key to making the, the rest of this easy. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It's got a lot of really cool techniques. Um, give me a comment. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, there will certainly be more of these videos. And thanks to the person who uh, gave me the challenge of making a geodesic dome. It was really fun. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks. This is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. And I will see you on the online.